The CEO of Hyundai in North America has said the company is in crisis mode. What's going on? Well, here's the short version of why Hyundai says it's currently in crisis mode. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. It's an interesting comment by Hyundai's CEO. Now, I've got a little idea. He didn't exactly say this, but um, Hyundai and Kia don't make any electric cars in the United States. Yes, they plan to do so, but they don't currently do that. That could be a problem for them. However, the Hyundai brand has catapulted ahead of its rivals, or some of them in the US sales rankings, in three short years. They've actually done pretty well in the US. However, North American CEO Jose Munoz says the company is in crisis mode as it ramps up investment to expand its domestic footprint and turbocharge its US growth. Speaking Tuesday at the Automotive News Congress, Munoz said Hyundai Motor North America's automotive operations and those of its 835 independent dealers contributed 20.1 billion and 190,000 jobs to the US economy in 2021. Now there was some pretty big issues. Hyundai was taken to court for child labor abuse. Apparently um, a number of their suppliers, which they actually owned because Hyundai Grobus owns those suppliers, um, have been hiring kids as young as 10 or 11. And they have known about this. It's been a, a bit of a, an ongoing issue at Hyundai or at their suppliers. Now, Hyundai wasn't referring to this when they spoke about crisis mode, but it is worth mentioning that, in my opinion, that's the biggest crisis they've had to deal with. Now, however, Hyundai wanted us to focus on what they're doing in the US, and Munoz said more money is going to be invested there thanks to the commitment by Hyundai Motor Group Chairman Ul Sun Chung to invest $12.6 billion in the US by 2025. This avalanche of investment is coming as a Hyundai brand jumps up the retail standings in the United States. Hyundai ranked number eight in US sales in 2020 with 622,000, but it jumped to number five last year, moving 724,265 vehicles, meaning it's increased its sales by about 100,000. It's a good result, but it's not spectacular. It was surpassed though only by Toyota, Ford, Chevrolet, and Honda. Munoz joked that such breakneck expansion still isn't good enough. I'm really disappointed with the evolution. I think we should have done much more and faster, said Munoz, who is global COO of Hyundai worldwide. So we are in crisis mode. Now Munoz did make the point that I think we've got to be aware that Hyundai is losing money on all of its electric cars that it's selling in the US right now. It's selling them at pretty good prices. They don't qualify for EV incentives. Hyundai has, of course, had to import those cars. That costs a lot of money. I mean, right now, shipping costs cost around about 10 times what they did 24 months ago, 10 times. Hyundai is having to absorb that cost by shipping EVs to the US. And then, of course it's having to absorb the cost on its cars that it's selling at a discount, basically to compete with Volkswagen, with Tesla, uh, with Ford, with Mustang Mach-E. So it's probably losing a similar amount to Ford on every electric car that it sells in the US, but it's clearly willing to take that hit in order to try to grow its market share. Munoz has highlighted the new electric car facility which includes an EV battery testing lab as part of Hyundai Motor North America's stepped up investment in the US, where combined sales of the Hyundai and Genesis brands rose 13% to 570,000 vehicles through August this year. So Hyundai is actually doing even better this year. But the challenge here is that the vast majority, well over 90% of the vehicles that Hyundai sell in the US right now are internal combustion. Uh, Hyundai have got a lot of work to do to be able to actually begin selling large numbers of electric cars. The 2021 economic impact figure of 20.1 billion cited by Munoz was based on a recent study of the company's economic reach by the Center for Automotive Research. Now he said there is still room for improvement. We decided to double down and increase our investments. Because of the increased spending in local manufacturing, which to be fair, was pretty much forced on Hyundai and Kia who complained about it. 
by the US government with the new, of course, IRS incentives. Of that money they're spending, around 43% of all Hyundai brand vehicles sold in 2022 were made in the US, the company says. But that means that 57% of all vehicles they sold in the US weren't made in North America. For Hyundai Motor Group as a whole, including the Hyundai Genesis and Kia brands, around 48% of all US sales were generated from domestically assembled vehicles in 2022. That ratio of locally made products will increase, Munoz said earlier. But like I said, the only reason that ratio is going to increase is because of new government regulations around local production, around getting incentives for batteries, getting incentives for EVs. There's many billions of dollars that Hyundai would be well, forced to give up and market share if they didn't make that investment. So I think it's a good investment, but they didn't really have much choice. Hyundai Motor Group will soon derive half of its US sales from domestic plants, he said, and that mix could climb as high as 70% locally by 2030. That's actually a good thing, especially considering the fact that around 70% of all EVs made worldwide are right now made in China. As for fully electric vehicles though, the Hyundai Group aims to deliver or derive 100% of US sales from local plants by 2030. The group's EV dedicated meta plant in Georgia will spur this growth. We're becoming an American domestic brand, almost, said Munoz. And of course, Hyundai are also investing a lot of money into a battery plant as well in a joint venture in the US. In fact, that plan is estimated to cost 8 billion US dollars. So a lot of investment here coming from Hyundai. Really good to see this. Good to see their sales growth as well. And to see the Ionic 5 improve its sales in the United States. Like I've said all along, the IRS was absolutely good for geopolitics. We can't have one country making most of the world's cars, that one being China. That was where we were headed. Things are definitely changing now. And realistically, we now know the US is better prepared for electric future than countries like the United Kingdom, which um, we all thought were on that were headed towards that path more so. I mean, EV adoption in the UK is higher, but the US now, because of the local manufacturing, because we're going to see probably around $250 billion invested into US EV manufacturing, that will change very, very quickly. What are your thoughts on all this? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.